In today's video, we're gonna share with you how to install a mixing valve, specifically an American Standard mixing valve, which they sent us because we're partnering with them on a series of videos on how to remodel a bathroom, in particular, a small bathroom. So in today's video, we'll show you how to install an American Standard mixing valve and get you one step closer to remodeling your bathtub or shower. This is the shower valve, the Quentin shower valve by American Standard that you're gonna learn how to install. This is what it looks like after everything is complete. The bathroom is tiled in this case, and the trim kit is in chrome, which really makes the tub shower pop. Like I said, this is the Quentin bath shower trim kit. These are the model numbers in case you're interested. It comes with integral shutoffs, so that way if you have to replace the cartridge, you can shut the water off to the shower without. And you want to remove the stops because they have rubber gaskets in them, as does the the cartridge so you want to take the cartridge apart remove all the rubber gasket and seals before you solder the mixing valve to the copper pipe because those little those little rubber o-rings will melt so just remove them keep them in a safe place and that way you can put everything back together once you're done soldering follow your local plumbing codes in terms of the the shower valve height and location in this case we centered it on the tub so that was about 14 and a half inches over off of the stud wall. As you can see, Steve is measuring over to get it centered. Cut all your copper pipe to size using an auto cut tool like Steve was using or a rigid number 15. Dry fit all the copper fittings together like we did here and then use emery cloth to do a final cleaning of all the, the edges of the pipe that you cut. You also want to deburr them. We have a great video on YouTube that shows you all the ins and outs of, uh, you know, soldering tips. But you want to clean out the brass fittings too with emery cloth or a brush, like Steve is doing. Apply flux to all your copper pipes and fittings and the brass fittings inside the shower valve, and then dry fit them together. You want to get put everything together before you apply heat to this setup. So as you can see, we're putting all of our elbows together, our PEX fittings, and we're using MAP gas for this project. It just heats up the pipe a lot faster. Um, so as you can see, Steve is applying heat, equal heat to all the fittings uh, and, and dabbing that with his solder. So you just wanna make sure that once you have the solder in place that you wipe it off with a, a sponge or a rag. So we did this for all the fittings of the shower valve. Again, applying even heat. You may have to heat up the brass a little bit longer than the copper. Uh, and again, just using the exact same solder that you use for all the copper fittings. As you can see here, it doesn't take very long to heat them up and apply the solder using the MAP gas. But again, any drips you wanna clean up you don't want any drips because that may compromise the integrity of your, your solder at joint. So again, you may have to apply extra heat to the brass. As you can see here, this is real time. We didn't want to fast forward through this. We wanted to give the impression of it may take you a little bit longer to solder that copper to the brass. But again, Make sure you dab off any excess solder to get a nice clean look. So at the elbow, you just want to make sure that that elbow, that 90 degree for the tub spout, is vertical and plumb when you're soldering it. Add the plaster guard to the shower valve. The finished wall has to fit inside that shower guard depth. So your finished wall is probably gonna be about three quarters of an inch. What you wanna do is dry fit that inside the wall and then use a level to see how far out that plaster guard sits from the finished wall. So we had to add a uh, half inch OSB inside that shower stud spacing there because that would bump out the plaster guard enough for our finished wall to sit inside of it. In this case, we wanted our tub spout to be about three to four inches off the tub and we're gonna be using PEX. As you can see, Steve is attaching PEX and you want that clamping ring to reveal about an eighth inch or one sixteenth of an inch of the PEX behind it. So again, we're dry fitting the shower valve. We're making sure that it's centered on the tub. And then uh, we also wanted to double check that that tub spout was about three to four inches above the tub, just because in this case, uh, that's gonna look good and adhere to our plumbing codes. Then we just screwed it in place using galvanized screws and Steve is making sure that the pipes are nice and plumb. There was a little bit of wiggling in that, 
that pipe leading down to the tub spout. So we tax a two by four in place. You can actually screw it in place too if you don't have a pass load nailer. We had to shim a little bit behind it, but we also used a clamp to secure it in place. Again, check your local building codes for the height of the shower head. In this case, we chose 71 inches because it would be above the shower niche and we wanted it to, to be above the shower niche. We had to drill through the two by fours to fit the pipe and then solder the drop elbow, the brass drop elbow to it. So then we just put that little stopper in place so we could check the pressure of the plumbing. You always want to center it just like you did with the tub spout and the shower valve. So center it and then we put some blocking in place to kind of make everything solid. So again, we're, we had to unfortunately solder everything in place inside the wall. Just be careful when you're doing this. You can put a, a heat shield behind it or a scrap piece of wood. But just make sure that that's not burning when you're done. So Steve is putting all the pecs together here. We use blue to indicate the, the cold water inlet. And then the nice thing is there's no soldering required for this. So you can just clamp everything in place with those clamping rings and you're done putting all the water lines together. Once the shower valve cools down, you can put the cartridge in just like we did here. Make sure it's oriented the right way. And then there's this little clamp that goes over top of that gray portion of the cartridge. So you want to clamp all that down. Make sure your seals are in place correctly. You want to screw those three screws down as well. Make sure they're nice and tight. Then on this American Standard setup, there's a little red arrow indicating the temperature. We put that on three just to make sure it wouldn't scald the user and then finally you have your stops and you want to put those in place make sure all the rubber gaskets are appropriately set and you can tighten them down using a pair of channel locks so make sure those are nice and tight as well and then steve just put together this little mechanism to test the pressure you can also use a shark bite fitting um, he also put that mechanism up in the drop elbow and tested the pressure. When you're tiling your shower, leave enough room around the shower valve to access the shutoffs. That's really, really important. We placed a chrome fitting over top of the cartridge, then the escutcheon, and the escutcheon is held in place using two screws. You just need to position those two screws through the escutcheon and into the into the shower valve itself and tighten them down by hand not with an impact driver that's super important then there's this little cover that goes over top of everything that covers the screws now you'll need a little allen wrench to tighten down on the handle the handle for this setup is really cool because you just pull up it turns the water on and then you adjust the temperature left to right super simple you always want to flush out the system too. Um, make sure that you do that before you put the shower head in place. One of the things that we really like about this setup is the tub spout. It just slides onto the copper pipe and there's a little Allen screw that sets it in place. But you have to clean off your copper pipe. Use a, use a piece of emery cloth to do that. And in this case, you need about an inch and a half of copper pipe. So we mark that and then cut it with an auto cut tool. It's just the easiest tool in this particular setup because it's a tight space. We do recommend deburring that and also getting it nice and smooth with the emery cloth. So again, the tub spout just slides right on. And one tip that we have for you is just turn it over to position your Allen wrench and then you can tighten it to the copper pipe. But it's super simple. There's no soldering required, which is awesome. And it's very, very quick to install. Add about six to seven revolutions of Teflon tape to your shower arm before you screw it into the drop elbow and also put your escutcheon on before you do that. So again, this is this is the last step. So we're just going to screw the shower arm into the drop elbow, but don't cross thread this. That's definitely something you want to avoid. Get it nice and tight, place your escutcheon in place and then flush out the system again before you add your shower head. Now in this setup, uh, we also needed to apply Teflon tape to the top of the shower arm. Now there's a rubber gasket that came with the shower head. You just wanna put this down inside the shower head for a good seal between it and the shower arm. So we screwed that in place by hand and then used a crescent wrench to tighten it down about another half turn. So there you go, that's your shower head looks pretty good it works it's functional 
and we're pretty happy with the setup of this shower. As you can see, this is the finished tub spout look. This is the shower valve with the escutcheon plate. This is the shower head. When, when you put everything together, with that floating sink and the tile and it looks awesome. Lots of really great tips and tricks in today's video on how to install a mixing valve, specifically an American Standard mixing valve. If you wanna take your bathroom remodeling to the next level, check out bathroomrepairtutor.com. That's where we have all of our online classes on how to do things like install cement board, tile a shower surround, build a walk-in shower, you name it. They're all over on bathroomrepairtutor.com. Thanks again for watching the video. Take care, we'll talk to you soon.